Good evening, welcome back to the show. Now our next guest this evening made history recently by becoming the first Australian female to win both the International Boxing Federation's Bantamweight World title and the WBC World Bantamweight title. Her record is absolutely outstanding, having only lost two out of 25 fights in her highly celebrated career. Please welcome Susie Q Ramadan. Hello, Hello. thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Please take a seat. Now, I am such a big fan of yours. I've been such a big fan since, uh, I don't know if you know this about me, but I've dabbled in the world of boxing. And when I first started, I, I went looking for female comedians, uh, female comedians, female boxers, and I found you. What made you get into boxing? It's in a cra crazy world. Um, a lot of things, really. I think, um, you know, the, the, the training of it all, the discipline, yeah. the hardship and... Um, you know, I, I've always been the top that anything that was easy would be boring. So, yeah. um, you know, and the mental um, challenge of it all. So keeps me fit and, um, yeah. you know, so um, I've just been lucky to, to have succeed so much. You've done incredibly well. And you are at the moment, it's kind of a bit of a break for you at the moment to figure out where your next fight is. Is that right? Um, not so much a break, but yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, through Christmas and stuff like that, we have a couple of couple of weeks off, and yep. um, now I get I'm back in training, and um, now it's just a matter of um, negotiating and, and um, you know trying to get the next bout to happen soon. So yeah, now the next bout, as I mentioned before, so you've had 25 fights, you've only lost two, and both of those losses, I just I'm so fascinated by this whole story. <sighs> they were both against the same woman, Yasmin Rivas, who is she's Mexican, is that yes, right? That's right. Yeah. So that's the next fight that you're trying to line up? I uh, would love to get another rematch with her third rematch. Um, obviously, yeah. as you know, like a couple of t uh, the twice that I fought her, there has been controversial uh, decisions. Yeah. So, um, but with the last fight, I think I was off for two years. So coming back and um, I did, I must say, I, I'm happy with my performance. Yeah. Um, you know, it could have gone either way, but you know, wasn't lucky on the night, but I was still happy with um, yeah, the, the performance and yeah. let's just hope that we can get another one. <laughs> yeah, well I've, I've watched the fight, um, it is all up on YouTube if anybody wants to watch it. It is incredibly close and when you take into account that you've gone to a, into a different time zone where there is all those altitude difficulties, not to mention the fact that there were some controversies around equipment and all that sort of stuff, the fact that you got so close, like it's it's interesting. If it were in Australia, I would have been very interested to see how the fight would have gone. Yeah, it would have been completely different. I mean, look, you've got a lot of disadvantages when you go to someone else's hometown, um, especially yeah. on the other side of the world. You know, the the heat, the time zone, the altitude, and I was I was lucky enough to have um, Rod Sodaro from Altitude Services who who installed a altitude tent in. Um, <laughs> in my house, so I was sleeping in there for several weeks. No, which, this um, by, by he installed it, uh, the, the tent in your house, like the whole house, like it no, got bubbled sorry, in. No, in, in, no. <laughs> I had to get my bed away um, out of the bedroom and, and, and install that in there, and that was my bed for up until the fight. So, so how long did you sleep in the altitude tent for? Um, you have when you do the altitude training, you have a certain amount of time of like um, six weeks before it actually kicks in. Um, so yeah, it that is was just yeah. A lot it felt a lot longer, but look, at the end of the day, like it, it really did uh, work and it made a difference because I know that you know the last time I thought they didn't do the altitude training and yeah, it sure does make a difference. Yeah, I bet. And you mentioned before that there was a two week, a two week, a two year break in between those fights. Were you considering not coming back? What was what was the break for? I must say that that out of um, my whole career had been the most challenging, um, just because. I wasn't actually on break. I would I'd be training, getting ready for a fight, and then you know it's, um, it would fall through um, due to promotional reasons, or, right. or the opponent would pull out and, and things like that. So I was constantly preparing for a fight. So we had about six fights that fell through. Are you kidding me? And yeah, and mentally it can be very hard to sort of stabilise yourself and continue to um, work so hard. Yeah. Um, but I've managed to um, you know keep myself. Um, um, balanced out in, in, in a way where, um, you know, this is, I didn't want to just give up because fights were falling through. I just, I want to keep going and trying to achieve as much as I can. Yeah. So I wasn't going to let that get to me. Now, is it hard? I mean, you're having fights falling through and stuff like that. 
Is it hard to carve out a career in Australia as not only a female athlete, but you're also a female Muslim athlete? Like, that's that's a big thing, I feel. Have you had to break certain stereotypes to make all this work? Yeah, sure I did. Um, look, there are still stereotypes you know, out there, but, you know, especially being a female in a male-dominant sport, yeah. as well as um, the cultural background. So, you know, you can imagine people were pretty shocked at, at first, especially yeah. being a female and um, getting into a, a sport like that. Um, but... You know, uh, it's been it's been good because a lot of people have turned around and said, well, you know, this girl's doing something good for herself and yeah. it's all good for the community and, you know, inspiring a lot of women and stuff like that. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's changed a lot of people's minds, which is good. Yeah. yeah I'd like to keep doing that. And is the industry, mm. is the world of sport for females in Australia, do you see it changing? It's got a it's, fair way to go, I'm sure, but yeah. are you seeing changes at the yeah, least? I think I have due to the um, amateur boxing being accepted in the Olympics. So ever since that yeah. happened, it, uh, you know, um, Look, boxing in Australia is hard as it is, yeah. let alone being a female in um, any sport, it's harder yeah. but as, a, as boxing. But I do see some improvements slowly, slowly, and I, I believe it will eventually um, you know, get better for them. Yeah. Um, maybe well. when I've retired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the luck, isn't it? Ah, oh, now it's all working perfectly. I bet. Um, just a few. Now, this is just some obvious questions that I'm sure you get asked all the time, but people will no doubt be fascinated. Number one, does it hurt? Does boxing and getting punched in the face hurt? Um, I think the first time you get hit, it probably does. Yeah. But <laughs> you sort of, um, you adjust to it, I guess. Um, your body gets, uh, I think the, the, the most painful part about boxing is actually the training, the grueling yeah. training of it all. It's just every day and, uh, you know, training twice a day before uh, before um, preparing for a fight. I think that's the, that's the hardest because you get, I mean, born in your whole body sore. And yeah. Yeah, and I follow yeah. you on Instagram, you do crazy things. Like it's not <laughs> only just, you're not only in the ring, it's a lot of weight training. You, there's a lot of uh, anaero aerobic sort of stuff in there as well. Yeah, is there something yes. that you dislike the most? Or? Um, um, I would say, I don't think I dislike anything. Um, I love everything about it. I think um, with my trainer, Lim Jacker, um, he, the one-on-one -on -one training we do, sometimes, I mean, he's a perfectionist, so sometimes it can be a bit, Oof, you know, I have my days where it's like I feel like just saying, uh, yeah, okay, can you just take it on, take it easy on me today? But yeah. I mean, it's hard work, but you know, I love it. So look, he, he, I do with him. It's just boxing, and then I have a um, strength and conditioning trainer as well that yep. do a lot of different things. But I like to spice it up. Okay. So you know, the other um, the other big question that I'm. I, when I boxed, my biggest fear was of having my nose broken. Like I would, I'd have dreams about it. I was so petrified. Has it happened to you? Have you had your nose broken? You know what? Surprised me, no. And it's not that hard to uh, miss, actually. I mean, I don't have the smallest <laughs> nose in the world, so. But I've been lucky, I guess. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a good mover, so. Great. Well, that's. Let's hope that it just stays <laughs> yeah, that way. Yeah, wood. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, if people want to follow you and follow your career, where is the best way that they can stay in contact with you? I have my website www.suzyqramadan.com.au and my um, Facebook fan page, Instagram. I mean, social media. You can't go wrong. So can't go wrong with social yeah. media. <laughs> Beautiful. So everybody should hop online and definitely follow Susie. I'm so excited to see if this rematch happens. I really hope it does, and I hope you win. Absolutely. Stick with us though. After the break, I'm going to be getting political, having a proper adult political conversation, so don't go anywhere. Strip down. Strip down. Why not? Why not? Don't touch me. How do you apologise in Spain? We're supposed to accept the, the, the gift. This is right from your own desktop. You can research, browse and shop. Oh. Oh man, okay. Gold for cool. Australia it was, it was. Um, now, the, the Holden been taking all their... Uh, their this neck thing.